next month. And then we have a we have a local fee of $10 for your grand total of $55. Don't forget to pay the lady. Next thing we're going to talk about is our hybrid meetings. I was able to make some phone calls and get and gather some information, some favorable and some not so much, but I'll just tell you what I have. I will put this in a little email or either a group chat and we can talk about it offline. But so far, I was able to make contact with Red Lobster, which is whom our sister, one of our other Toastmasters, what's the name of it, Maurice? Who? Top Cats, right? Oh, top Cats, yes, Top Cats. Top Cats uses Red Lobster. And I spoke to the one of the managers that was on duty. Her name was Heather. And she says that we are free to use it every second and fourth Monday only. Someone already has a commitment to the first and third Monday. And I'm assuming that first and third may also include the fifth. So, but I know for sure it's first and third. So the only commitment that we could have is the second and fourth Monday. Of course, they do have Wi-Fi. We will have full access to the area in the back. And we don't, they ask that we please make some sort of purchase, but they don't expect everyone to order a meal or make a purchase. So we do have them for every second and fourth Monday as an option. Next, I spoke with um, a manager named Jamie at Panera Bread. And the one on Duru, which is basically the one that's on Dolphin Street. And again, I don't know which one is most convenient for us. I tried to keep in mind the, the location that we had at Carpe Diem. I know that was convenient, I think, for most people. I'm not quite sure what the status is anymore of everyone's living arrangements. However, or what area of town you live in. However, I did speak to Panera Bread. We can have them every Monday, but they don't do reservations. So she says they're never busy on Monday evenings. We could come in, stake our little place. We, they do also have public Wi-Fi and we don't have to spend a dime. They, she, the lady I spoke to said that people come in there and do a whole shift of work and some buy a cup of coffee, some don't buy anything all day. So we, I told her that the most we would have is about 10 people, and she was okay with that. The USA Library, I was not able to get in touch with anyone there after making quite a few attempts. I'm going to try to send an email. I know, Donovan, you had said at one time that you were going to reach out and see what you could find out. So I'll talk to you offline about that because I know I didn't get a chance to send you an email to see where you were on that. And then Mobile County Library, I spoke to the one on McGregor, and they only can offer us a reservation for once a month. They do have public Wi-Fi. They can put us in our own private room, but they only can make a reservation for once a month because it's an ongoing reservation. So that's the only news that I have so far about hybrid meetings. I did not get a chance to talk to anyone at Fuse Factory. And I think the only other place we were going to call was, well, they may have been it. South Alabama and Fuse Factory are the two that I have not made contact with. So that's where we are right now. Just want to put that little information out there. So there is some hopes for our near future meeting in a hybrid environment. And uh, we'll just more to come on that later. Does anybody else, what, let me see, do I owe you anything else? We talked about dues and we talked about hybrid meetings. Do, do we have anything else to cover? Anybody else has anything else? <coughs> oh, Wes, I see your hand is raised. Yeah. So. Um... I'm hoping that when we get to the point where our Hilltoppers membership and Foley will have more than 10 members, we need that. We, 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 we each have more than 10 members for close to become distinguished. Yes, sir. And we are still actively working on that. Okay. Yes, we're definitely trying to. Oh, and I did speak to the other person that reached out and I did not get a response. So I left a detailed voice message. So hopefully she will call back. That was the other person that you had submit the information, Maurice. Yes. Okay, what, anything else, anyone else? I see the gates have joined us, yay. Uh, Donovan, you wanna see what, I don't think you guys had, we had put you for two rows. I don't know if you're gonna be able to accept them or not. Donovan, you wanna go over those rows? I, or I can share the chat one more time, I mean, 
I can share the agenda. Once again, let's see. For Cheyenne, we had you down as all county and grammarian. Would you be able to accept that role? Yeah, I can do that. Okay. All right. Thank you. And then Kyra, I don't know if you had a role or not. Let's see. General. Just general evaluator. General evaluator. Which what, what you think, uh, Kyler? Or as a matter of fact, we had Mr. Josh that wanted to do it for us as a guest. Yes, if Josh wants to um, give it a try, that's fine by me and I can okay. fill any role that you need me to fill. Okay, okay. All right, only thing we have left that needs to be filled was actually the table topics master and our theme was daylight savings. But if you don't think you can, you want to go through all that or uh, I can do it. I can, I can do that. I don't mind. I, um, I can, uh, I've got some cards I can grab real quick and I can make them <laughs> daylight. I can take the questions and twist them around, make them daylight savings time. Thank hey, you. thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Well, I'll stop sharing just to get this big screen out of the way. Okay. Well, we're not going to uh, hold up any more time. So we're going to move right into our meeting and I will be your Toastmaster for this evening. My name is Olivia and I will be our Toastmaster for the evening. Our meeting is divided into three sections. The first section is prepared speeches, which is sometimes often, which is also sometimes a pocket speech in which someone gives a speech anywhere from three to five minutes, five to seven, six to eight is typically how it goes. If it's a pocket speech, then you will just simply pull from your hip and talk about a topic of your choice. The second section of our meeting is the table topics portion. And during this portion, everyone gets an opportunity to be involved. A question will be asked, or a volunteer will be requested. And then once that person chooses to volunteer, then a question will be asked. You will have one to two minutes to answer that question at your, as you desire. The third portion of our meeting is our evaluation portion. We will go over those roles of the evaluation portion in just a moment. I will turn the lecture. Oh, never mind. Uh, the lecture is me. Okay, <laughs> as your table, to as your toastmaster. So let's get started going over those roles. So Maurice, your role is a timer this evening. Can you tell us a little bit about your role, please? Yes, I will be keeping the time on the prepared speech and also the table topics and the prepared speech, I assume is five to seven minutes. Mm -hmm. And what happened is at the, at the five minute mark, you'll see the green. And then at the six minute mark, you'll see the yellow. And then at the seven minute mark, you see red. And then for table topics, it's one to two minutes. At one minute, you'll see the green. At one and a half minutes, you see yellow, and at two minutes, you see red. Okay. That is my role as a timer. Thank you very much, Maurice, for your explanation. Let's move on to the gates. Kyler, can you explain to us your role this evening as table topic? Oh, Kyler's not there? He just stepped out. Okay, well then, Cheyenne, can you give us your explanation of your role as grammarian and all counter? And the um, word of the day was in the chat. Did you yeah, see I got, it? I, I got it. Thank you. Okay. okay. So as a grammarian, I will be looking for misuses of the English language. And as the odd counter, I will be looking for filler words uh, um, like uh, uh, anything that you use in, in short of like using like words or a pause to get your sense to keep going. And then I'll give a report at the end. Uh, the word of the day is cusp, and the definition is a point of transition between two states. So an example sentence, it doesn't have to be like states, like United States, but like a state of being. My example is, we are on the leading cusp of technology. So try to use that. Thanks. Thank you very much. Don't forget our word of the day is cusp a point of transition between two different states. 
Next, we will go to our, let's see, we have uh, our general evaluator. Josh, I will explain to you that role the best I can in a real quick time. So typically what the general evaluator does is just evaluates the flow of the meeting. At 6.45, I wrote down that we all came together, but then we took a five minute recess, but we only used three minutes. So you would say, you would start off by saying our meeting, our meeting began officially at 6.48, something along those lines. And then when you get to your evaluation portion, you will, indeed, you will then call on your evaluation team. The first person you will call on is your speech evaluator. And then your speech evaluator will give a three, up to a three minute evaluation of the person that performed or that gave a speech during the first portion of the meeting. Then from there, you will call on all those who had roles. That would be your timer, your grammarian, the all counter, and you will get a report of the word of the day, how many times and who used the word of the day. You will wrap up your general evaluation with whatever your feelings are about how the meeting has flown, how the meeting flown. <laughs> how the meeting flowed, and then you will return the lectern back to the Toastmaster. Um, did I make that clear? Does, did I, how did that sound? Everyone, was that okay? I'm going to put Mr. West on mute for a minute. Okay. All right. I think we've covered all our roles. Did I miss anything? Oh, nope. I didn't. Okay. All right. So we're going to move. West has his hand up. Go ahead, Mr. West. You're on mute. Take your stuff off of mute. I have a little glitch. Uh, I'm going to have to go to another meeting and get it right back to you. Okay. Sorry. That's fine. That's not a no. That's okay. Okay. Well, then that will leave us that time. If you're going to leave now, that'll give us those few minutes, and I'll go ahead and do those fun facts about daylight savings that I was going to do. So that'll take up the time for a pocket speech. So let's see, I guess you could say the title of this pocket speech is Why Save the Time? I'm gonna mostly be talking about fun facts about daylight savings. Maybe not so much fun facts, but maybe little known facts about daylight savings. Daylight savings is a practice by where millions, and I mean hundreds of millions of people in 70 countries change the clocks to give, to gain or lose an hour at a specific time in spring and then again in fall. Basically, during daylight savings, which is depicted by the warmer months, we save the day by letting darkness fall one hour later. But why save the day? In 1784, Benjamin Franklin thought it was a good idea to align the waking hours with daylight hours in order to simply conserve candles and the oil that was used to fuel the lamps. Did he invent daylight saving? No, he did not. However, it was considered a pretty good idea. There are some states in the US, along with the remainder of the world outside of the 70 countries that actually observe daylight savings that just said, nah, we, we don't want to be a part of daylight savings. One of those, the most popular state that does not observe daylight saving is Arizona. It's a desert state. And they experience many hours, sometimes more than 12, I mean, sometimes more than 14 a day of daylight. And they choose not to chase the sun and have daylight happen at 9 p.m. where it's already 120 degrees Fahrenheit outside. State officials just simply said no. Why stick us with another hour 
of scorching heat. Arizona does not observe daylight savings. First thing I would like for you to know that it's daylight saving, not daylight savings with an S. For you see, by definition, all you're doing is saving the daylight. No need to make that plural or show possession or ownership. We already talked about Ben Franklin did not invent it, but neither was it implemented or invented by farmers either, which is what me and I'm sure some of us thought years ago. As a matter of fact, farmers say, listen, my dairy cows want to be milked a certain time of day, no matter what the clock says. Farmers prefer to keep the consistency. Do you know that daylight saving has an impact on our health? Yes, it has been found that that shift, the moving into daylight saving has been linked to heart attacks, strokes, traffic fatalities, and workplace injuries. Oh, I'm so tired is what most people say. That's exactly what I said today when I woke up losing an hour of sleep. Many states want to stop the change and just stick to daylight savings all year. During the 1950s and 60s, now get a load of this. You're going to probably find this as amazing as I did. During the 1950s and 60s, do you know each U.S. region could begin or end daylight saving whenever they wanted? Can you imagine the chaos that must have caused if you thought that I was going to make a phone call or perhaps you need to, perhaps you did your banking in another time zone and you thought you were going to call the bank before they close at 5 p.m. only to find out it's like eight o'clock there or something. You just never know if each region was able to change as they choose. So in 19... 66, Congress passed the UT Act, and that was the Uniform Time Act, which created a standard time and ended that chaos and mass confusion. Uh, let's see, why? I'm sorry, President Wilson signed daylight saving into effect during World War I, and it was referred to as the fast time. But during World War II, it was again put in force after the bombing of Pearl Harbor, and it was called wartime. But during this period, it lasted from, yes, somewhat in the spring, February 9th, 1942, all the way to September 30th, 1945. And it was done to conserve energy. A poll was taken in 2014, and it found an increasing number of Americans just don't think daylight savings is worth the hassle. Also in 2014, only 33% of Americans supported the time change, down from 45% just a year earlier. In 1978, check this out. Chile decided to delay daylight saving to accommodate a visit from the Pope. And then they did it again in 1994 presidential inauguration. Chile just said, nah, not right now. We're going to wait. But finally, to answer the question that people ask every single year, when does the time change? When does daylight savings end? When do I set my clock back? Write this down. I'm only going to say it once. Daylight saving begins at 2 a.m. on the second Sunday in March. 2 a.m. Second Sunday in March. And it ends on the first Sunday in November. I'll leave you with this quote about daylight saving from an anonymous author. Only our government would believe that you can cut a foot off the top of a blanket and sew it to the bottom, and now you have a longer blanket. 
time is time. Thank you every, very much. And back to you, Toastmaster, which is myself. <laughs> All right. That was my speech on why save the time and fun facts about, or interesting facts about daylight saving. Maurice, get that, get that red off of me. I'm done. <laughs> All right, we're gonna move into our next portion of our meeting, which will be, yes, because, okay, I'm just making sure that Wes didn't come back. The next portion of our meeting, which will be our table topics portion, where everyone gets the opportunity to participate. And I'm gonna pass the lectern on to you, Mr. Kyler. Thank Greetings, you. fellow Toastmasters and honored guests. I'll be your table topics master for the evening. And I, I really enjoyed Olivia's speech on the, um, daylight saving time, which I'm going to try to say it right, saving time. Right. And it, it made me think when you brought up the statistics about the amount of people who approve of it and disapprove of it, for my first table topic, I would like to ask, and anyone can take it, anyone who raises their hand first, if you had the choice, would you keep daylight savings time or get rid of daylight savings time? And if so, would you choose to have the extra hour in the morning or the extra hour in the evening? All right, Josh. I would definitely go with the hour in the morning. And, you know, roll with that. Hopefully most people agree with me. Okay, sounds good. Thank you, Josh. I appreciate that. I, I'm with you. I do enjoy the uh, morning hour. That is quite nice. Although I will say I would prefer to have the longer days or the more daylight in the fall because I actually prefer to be outside in the fall more than I do in the, in the summer. So with yeah. that being said... Yeah, there has to be an easier way to do it than what we're doing. I mean, Absolutely. No doubt. And with that being said, my next table topic will be for anyone who raises their hand first. If you could go back in time, which year would you visit? Oh, I'll take it. All right, I think I saw Donovan first. Yes, thank you. Thank you, um, fellow Toastmasters and honored guests. My question is, what year would I want to go back in time? I would probably would have to say 19, the year of 1998. The reason why I want to go back to that year is so I can be able to see my grandfather. He served in the um, army. He was a great man. I heard a lot of stories. And I just thought it'd be a nice thing to actually go and meet him, to actually hear some of his wisdom. I know sometimes he can be, you know, a, um, a, a thing sometimes. Like, you know, sometimes he can be something of a man, but I, he was still my grandfather and at least it gives me a chance to see him, to ask him questions about a lot of different things and how, what he felt when he was serving in the army and how just different things that I would talk to him. I just wanted to just talk to him and over like a, I gotta be careful of saying this, but over a um, nice cold beer. But because I know that he enjoyed that and I just wanted to go back and actually finally um, get to know him, get to know him more and because I only hold the stories and I want to actually 
for you to get to know him as a natural person and how he got, you know, got my dad raised in a, in a way. Thank you, and I want to go ahead and relinquish the left on back to the, the Toastmaster, the Tabletop Toastmaster. Thank you for sharing that with us, Donovan. That, that's a very noble reason for, for wanting to go back in time to that year. So the next question I have for you guys, and this is again, kind of thinking back a little more about springtime and daylight savings time, people are starting to kind of want to get outside and do more and, you know, grill and things like that. So the question is now that, you know, it's springtime and we've got an extra hour during the day of daylight, what invitation would you love to receive during this time? I'll go. All right, Cheyenne. Fellow well, Toastmasters, I've been asked what invitation I would like to receive. Mine is not really seasonal. Mine is going to be more, more silly, so bear with me if you will. But um, I just got done watching The Bachelor, and mm -hmm. I would love an invitation as a married woman to go on and just point out how ridiculous some of those people are being. Like I was watching it and when they get out of the limo and you see him, I just wish I could be there and be like, him, really, come on. And then anytime like the girls are fighting over something silly, just be like, girls, look at him. Is this worth it? Like you guys are awesome. You're lawyers, you're Yale graduates and you're fighting over this guy. So I just wish I could be there to kind of be a commentator. I'm, I'm a good mediator as well, I feel like. So I could mediate some of those situations because I just watch it and I get frustrated with the drama. So it'd be interesting to be on there. It's like a undercover married person to to see a to maybe stir up a little bit of drama to make it more difficult for the person because the guy is always difficult. But it would just be fun to be there. So thank you. Back to you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for sharing that. The, uh, I feel like The Bachelor is just designed to, to frustrate the hell out of people. Um, everybody on that show just makes the dumbest decisions possible. <laughs> so with that, I apologize if anyone enjoys that show here. Um, <laughs> with that, uh, the next question for whoever wants to answer it is, what do you hope will be the next big invention? All right, Scott. What would I hope to be the next big invention? My thing that I miss the most and would love to see as an invention is peanut butter fudge that is sugarless. I cannot find a peanut butter fudge recipe that doesn't have added sugar. And I am a diabetic. And so I look for things that are a little bit more healthy. And there's nothing about peanut butter fudge that is healthy at all, ever. If they just make one recipe, a decent recipe without sugar, something else, it would just make my life so much nicer and better. And if I could invent that thing, I think I could make the world happy. I think you could bring world peace just with a really good sugarless peanut butter fudge recipe. I mean, look what Coca-Cola has done. I think I could be the peanut butter fudge king. Thank you. Thank you, Buck. If, if you find a way or know of someone who does invent that, please let me know because I'm in the same camp. Peanut butter fudge is one of my favorite uh, treats, although I know it is a loaded full of sugar. <laughs> so I'm, I'm with you on that one. So uh, just checking on the time here. Do you guys, do we have time for any more? You want to go ahead and move on? Okay. With that, I will, uh, I had a, this is a great table topic session. I really enjoyed everyone's answers. Um, I always enjoy table topics, so this was a good a good session. And with that, I turn the lectern back to our Toastmaster.
Thank you very much, Kyler. And yeah, we wanted to wrap it up because we want to give ourselves a few minutes to introduce ourselves to Woody at the end. So uh, that's why we just figured we'll go ahead and wrap it up. So without any further ado, we'll move right into our evaluation portion of the meeting. And tonight we have an honored guest that's going to do our general evaluation, and that will be Josh. Josh, come on up. If you need any help, I'm here. Okay, hey everybody, fellow Toastmasters and guests. Uh, our meeting began at 6.48 p.m. Olivia gave fun facts about daylight saving time. Uh, that was her pocket speech. Uh, the impacts on our health, the old ways daylight saving time operated, and the history using standard time. All right, then from there, we went to Collar for the table topics. And now let's hear from our speech evaluator. Very good. Buck, did you jot down some stuff for me? If not, it was no big deal. Oh, yeah. Got you. I got you covered. I'm excited. Olivia, it's always great to see your speech. The, the first thing you do that everybody really needs to pay attention to is smile. The only person that I know that smiles as much as you do when they're speaking, I would have to say, is, is Crystal. Uh, and, and that just puts everybody in a, a good mood. It, it really gets you started off well. And your speech was a pocket speech. You introduced what you're speaking about. You mentioned it was supposed to be a fun speech, and you hit that right on the head. Your speech flowed well, was well organized. I like the history that you talked about, about Benjamin Franklin trying to save candles. The World War I and Fast Time, World War II and War Time, those were just really neat facts that you added in there. The things that I liked was how you added those and they kind of flowed. It wasn't, they didn't jump around. So I thought your structure was really good. Something that you might be able to add in it was a fun speech and for the sake of fun, but you might be able to add something in there that's a, a moral lesson or something. The, that, that could be added in there and it really is depending on your audience and your purpose. Mm -hmm. Other than that, what I really think you do exceptionally well are two things together. One, you have vocal variety. When you're talking, you said, nah, and you, you got excited and sped up and slowed down with your speech. So your pace was really good and using your vocal variety during that time. But the other thing you do really well is you do gestures. As you're speaking, I can see your hands and you have your camera placed so that when you're speaking and you're gesturing with your hands, people can see those gestures. And you combine those gestures with your vocal variety and your facial expressions and it really makes the speech even more fun. And that's what I really think is my biggest takeaway from your speech, as fun as the speech was, your vocal variety and your gestures really tip it over the top. It's something we can all learn, being that my vocal variety is the one thing I need most help with. I, I watch and I try to learn from others to see what they do. And you are a great example. Great speech. You hit all the uh, marks high, and thank you for allowing me to evaluate. Wow, thank you very much, Buck. I really appreciate that. Thanks a lot. Josh, back to you. Okay, uh, now let's go to our timer. Yes, for the timings, for Olivia's speech, on why save the day, seven minutes and nine seconds for Josh's table topics, 15 seconds, Donovan's table topics, two minutes and 16 seconds, Cheyenne's table topics, one minute and 15 seconds, Buck's table topic, one minute and seven seconds, and Buck's evaluation of Olivia's speech, two minutes and 39 seconds plus plus five or to 10 seconds, because I started the time late. And that is the 
timer's report. Back to you, General Evaluator. All right. Thank you, Maurice. Now let's go to, to the grammarian for uh, hopefully very few errors in tonight's speeches. Hello, everyone. We are now on the cusp of the meeting where we go into the end of our speeches and start reviewing everything. So I'll give you my reports. I did not catch any misuses of the English language as the grammarian. I did not catch any word of the day. Did someone use it and I missed it? Okay. Just you. <laughs> you know, I have to overdo it. Uh, with the all counter, <laughs> Kyler caught a couple of ums and uhs while you were presenting the table topic questions. During my table topic, I said uh very obviously and then like very boldly. At least I owned it. And then Josh, I heard a couple of us during your presenting of the general evaluation, but we did awesome. So with that, I will pass it back to you. Okay, everybody, uh, really appreciate the, the flow of the meeting. I think the meeting went really well. And hopefully I'm on the cusp of a great general evaluation. Now, back to you, Madam Toastmaster. Awesome, Josh, you did a great job. Thank you very much for your evaluation. And neutral will be no night because God is like, amen, that's right. All right, thank you for that, Maurice. Uh, before I go any further, I see Mr. West, our coach. So I will give him a moment to speak and welcome back, Mr. West. Thank you. We had a little technical issues yet. I'm, um, okay, I'm the club quality chair and I host coach, coach training sessions, which unfortunately are meet the same time we do once a month. So I was trying to get points for a club by giving a speech and also field that meeting. I, I, I had a designate person to introduce our speaker. Everything was working well on paper, but we had a glitch right at, the, right at a critical moment. But now that meeting is flowing and to give points for the club, I would like, if possible, I'd like to have the opportunity to give the speech that I would like, that I had intended to give. Okay, we, it's 7.32. Well, we got a few minutes with if you, how long was your speech, five to seven? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Your evaluation. Let me go back and find your evaluation form. Uh, let's see. I think we can squeeze it in. We don't have a, we're going to spend these few minutes to give Woody a quick rundown of who we are. But um, I think we can do that maybe two minutes. If we could just introduce ourselves really quick or better yet, I'll give us a short version and I will introduce us all. So, and then we'll move into your speech, Wes. Were you raising okay. your hand again? No, I'm trying to lower it. Okay. All right, so Woody, here is the quick version. I, Olivia, am your president for Hilltoppers. We have Donovan O'Malley, who is our secretary for Hilltopper. We have Mr. West, which is our club coach. We thank you very much. Buck, he is our, he is a part of our sister or our brother's side of Hilltoppers, and he's over in Foley. We are combining our meetings right now and book what is your role you are vpe i'm the club coach and i think uh sergeant at arms <laughs> sergeant at arms very good okay and then we have david who is a member of hill toppers here in mobile and he's not taking a role he didn't take a role this year and then we have maurice heidelberg who is our vpe am i saying that right maurice yeah. And VPE is Vice President of Education, which you already know, this being that you are a former member. Maurice, is that the only role you have this year? Uh, yes, and I've sort of taken on the Vice President of Membership. Too. Vice President of Membership. Okay. All right. And then we have Ms. Cheyenne. Hello, Ms. Cheyenne. And your role is, I always get your initials wrong. Give me your role, Cheyenne, so I won't say it wrong. I believe it's VPR, the public VPR. relations. That's, that's it. 
Okay, and then we have Mr. Josh, who is one of our honored guests. This is his second. Is this your second week with us, Josh? Second or third week? I don't want to. Third week. Yes. Oh, well, that's it. You're no longer a guest. You're family now. So we have our honorary member, Mr. Josh. And I think that covers us all. Oh, Woody, did I miss? Oh, Kyler. My goodness. Kyler over there on the ones and twos, no. <laughs> but we also have Kyler who did not take a role with us this year, but he's been a member of Toastmasters for uh, quite a few years and he has had roles. All of us, I think, have been members of Toastmasters for three years minimum, 2018, well, almost four years or more. Okay, I'm gonna say one thing. You guys are doing a great job. I am so glad to see you keep this club together the way you're doing because you're helping each other so much and you, you know, you're going to have members come and go and you're always helping people. So it's really good to see this club stay together the way you've got Maurice and all of you. And Maurice knows a lot of the same people as me. This club's actually been in existence. I mean, going way, way back. You've had members that have uh, won competitions and you've had great speakers over the years and you guys, it's so good to see this continue. You guys are helping each other. And, and I love what I see, saw here tonight. And it was a pleasure visiting with you guys. So y'all are doing a great job, you know, keep it up. And, you know, I, I'll probably visit again, you know, my schedule allowing, but I really like what I saw here tonight. So thank you all so much. Thank you again, Mr. Woody. And we are so glad that you stopped by. Thank you so much. Okay, Wes, the time is now 7.36, so we got about right exactly seven minutes if you want to go ahead and get started on your speech, and I put your introduction and everything aside, Wes, so please forgive me for that. Can you guys hear me? Because I'm going, my end is going kind of nuts. Can y'all hear me? Okay. Okay, Wes, I'm trying to pull up your evaluation form here and that's what's causing my computer to, to lock up. But go ahead, I will do your evaluation. You can start your speech. When you're in high school, you might have read the story, The Mystery of Reading a Sea. That's a story about two adventurers from Norway who ventured by balloon to the Greek island of Reading Sea. Mr. Toastmaster, tell Toastmasters and guests, I'm here to say that I have a reason to suspect that, that there's more fact to that story than fiction. You may recall that in that short story, the two, the two adventurers went to this Greek island to do some exploring and then, and then there, Midst of their explorations, they found this cavern, and deep within this cavern, they found this cache of Greek scrolls or scrolls that appear to have Greek lettering. So they spent the next several days examining those scrolls and transporting them to a location close to the balloon to make it easier for their ultimate departure back to Norway. Well, all during this time, there were tremors in the earth. And as they were leaving the island, there was a great earthquake. And the, the, the main character of the, of the novel was in the, in the gondola, preparing the balloon for departure. His assistant was grabbing the scrolls hurriedly and put in the arms of the, the main character then he boarded the gondola and threw out the anchor, lay, anchor rope and the balloon lurched, lurched upward. Well, as the balloon lurched upward, the, the scrolls that the main character had in his hands spilled out and in desperation, that adventure reached down and grabbed one of the scrolls and it ripped from his hand. All the scrolls were lost in that swirling dust below. Well, eventually the adventurers made it back as far as the English coast where the balloon hit bad weather and crashed into the English Channel. And the men were picked up by an English fisherman. So the story goes. Many years ago, I was touring Tromsø, Norway. 
and I visited the Museum of Norwegian Exploration and Antiquities. That home was actually the family home of Professor Eric Steinari, the author of The Mystery of Arena E.C. But it turns out that not only was the professor an author, but he was an inventor and an adventurer. In that museum, and this, there's, a, there's a study that was once a study, a study, I saw a sketch of a, a balloon. It was an elongated balloon attached to a boom, and on the sides were a system of cell-like structures operated by a system of levers and pulleys. In the middle, there was a chamber surrounded by solar mirrors to heat the air in the chamber to cause the balloon to rise. Now that sketch exactly, exactly described the balloon that was in the story, the mystery of reading and seeing. It turns out that the professor was supposedly involved in a balloon crash many years ago, but those details are a bit sketchy. Now, in a conspicuously placed on a wall with his mementos is a picture frame. In that picture frame is a piece of fabric with what appears to be Greek lettering. I took a photograph of that picture frame. Here it is. Now, remember in the story when the main character grabbed for that scroll and it was ripped from his hand? Question is, was there anything left in his hand? Could this be the only shred of evidence of that one of, a, one of those scrolls. Only Professor Steinari could tell us for sure. But that would undoubtedly give new meaning to the mystery of Irini the Sea. And Toastmaster. Awesome. Thank you very much. And I will quickly give you your evaluation. I'll fill out your form with and send it to you. But I just want to say from the very beginning, not only did you stand up, but that camera was angled at such a position that we saw every possible gesture that you wanted the audience to see. And you started out with a very catchy statement because it caught my attention, even though my, my wonderful Wi-Fi was kind of blinking a little bit, but I, I saw the enthusiasm right from the very beginning. And I must say that your gestures were just simply amazing, amazing. I thought for a moment that I was in a movie, some type of screenplay. I don't know. I just felt like I was watching TV. So thank you very much for that. And then nothing warms my heart than to see an actual picture so just to send us just a little, that little piece of that little piece of illustration, I think was phenomenal. I noted that your speech was interesting and mysterious and very catchy. So I'm gonna have to go do some research and see if I can gather some more knowledge. If I, if I can't really think of anything that I would say that maybe you could work on other than slow down a little bit because I was trying to make sure I heard everything that you were saying. So especially when you're talking about we're not in person, so it's got to go through all those waves before it gets to your virtual audience and some of your uh, words I didn't catch. So maybe just slow down a little bit and just to give us a little bit more variety, speed it back up, slow it back down. That's probably the only thing that I could think of. Your speech was phenomenal. And again, it was very catchy for me. And I like that little bit of mystery. So who knows? We're going to have to find that out. Maybe you can give us a little bit more next time, like part two, maybe. Uh, again, I enjoyed your speech. Thank you very much. I'll put out the form and send it to you. ASAP. And with that being said, I think we're about ready to close 
I think we're ready to close out. It's 7.45, so perfect timing. Maurice, would you, would you like to give him the, his timer's report? Did you time Yes, uh, uh, his speech was five minutes and eight seconds. Very good, so you were right in there. Very good, and thank you for that, Maurice. If we have nothing else, um, that's it for me. I will send out a text or probably just an email to everyone and we'll further discuss our hopeful hybrid choices for our future meetings. And I will reach out again to the other person that showed interest in the meeting. And I think that's it until we meet again. Everyone think of a theme. Donovan has been exceptional. He came up with our theme of daylight savings uh, and anything having to do with springtime, March. So I'm just requesting and hopefully challenging and encouraging everyone to help us think up of a theme. We wanna to continue to make our meetings not only informative, but interesting and fun as well. So remember each one, reach one. That's it for me. Have a good night all. <laughs> Night. All right, take care and have a good night. All right, good night.